Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Gamers Lounge Podcast. My name is John Meadows. With me as always is Eric and Nathaniel. Robert's um, out with um, technical issues. I think he's going to try to hang out in the chat for a little while, but uh, no biggie. It happens. You gotta love Skype. Yeah. Skype is the best. <laughs> it was until Microsoft bought them. No, maybe. <laughs> slowly went downhill. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Slowly, very slowly. So are you saying Beam is going to go and die on the vine uh, in another two or three years because Microsoft know. bought them? Is that uh, what you're saying? It depends on if they put too many fingers in the pot. It could happen. <laughs> and Beam actually is pretty cool. Dude, Beam is great. But, you know, I, I hope Microsoft doesn't mess with it. I hope they just bought it and said, here it is. We can let everybody have it, and that's it. We're not touching it. We'll let the guys do what they do with it and let it be. But... We'll see. We'll see. We we all know Microsoft and how things, you know, sometimes can go yeah. with Microsoft. So. I hear ya. Yeah. Well, let's just start with uh, start into what we always what we always do with what we've been playing. Um, Eric looks like he's been playing a lot, so <laughs> Eric might want to go. Eric might want to go first. <laughs> I'll, I'll go first. It's funny because I thought I actually I was I still haven't finished Dishonored two. It's on my list. I, I blocked off time on Friday and I got distracted. Yeah. So. It always happens with stuff. It's turning spurring, turning warm here. I tend to get distracted by other stuff. So, yeah. But I will grass. finish it soon, very soon. I want to put it to rest. I'm very excited to finish it and do another playthrough. Okay. Mm. So, um, the only modern thing I played was uh, Rain World for PS4. I had a review code for that. It is an interesting platformer. Is the best way to describe it. Yeah. It's not for everyone. It's pretty challenging. That's what I heard. I heard it was very uh, challenging. Yeah, the environment's play. cool. The music's interesting. It's I thought it was a different take. I, I enjoyed the time I spent with it. Uh, played some Wii stuff. Played a little bit more Super Smash Bros. Brawl, because I like that, and I'm terrible at it. I played New Super Mario Bros. I had never played that for the Wii. I got it this weekend in part of a deal. Really? So. Oh, that's like you one play of the as best in Brawl? That's one of the best games on the Wii. Do you have a go-to that? character in Smash Bros.? Who? Oh, in the GameCube version, which I did play a lot of back in the day, I really liked Link. Um, and in the original on N64, I like Kirby and Link. Um, this one... Dude, oh, Kirby in the original was deadly. And then they nerfed him for Melee. <laughs> Samus, uh. I need to, like... I just need to play more. Yeah. But I want to unlock... I, I have... I have... I played it several years ago when it first came out. My friend had it, and he unlocked everybody. And I like some of the other characters you can get, but I haven't gotten that far yet, so... Hmm. I also really want to play Mad World, too. I got that really cheap, and it's just sitting downstairs. It's a pretty Maybe cool that's pretty game. Fun. Yeah. I yeah. remember playing it when it came out. Super cheap, you get it for like ten bucks. Yeah, I need to play No More Heroes. You need to play No More Heroes two as well. I played that a while ago. That one's not too expensive anymore either. I think I saw uh, a copy of it the other day for less than twenty dollars. Yeah, I think you can get both games for around thirty. Um, and GameStop tends to have both of them, and uh, they're pretty common. So, but it was, I played the first game. I think I may have played the second one several years ago, but it's been a while. Yeah, it was fun from what I remember. I liked it. I liked. I tend to like Suda Fifty One stuff. So, yeah. um, I did play. Uh, I picked up some Dreamcast stuff for my brother and a few things for myself recently. I played a little bit of Crazy Taxi. It's uh, always played a Capcom, good one. Played Capcom versus S- and SNK. Mm-hmm. I do. I used to think I was pretty good at that, but the computer was just destroying me. <laughs> I need to <laughs> practice again. It's, it's fun. It still looks good and sounds good. Plays great. Like fresh out of the arcade, if it was ever there. Played some Blitz 2001. I'm terrible at that. Used to be really good back in the day, but that's still a fun game because you know it's just throw the football. Yeah. You no, know, no rules. Um, I also played and recently picked up for under ten dollars. Time Splitters Future Perfect for PS2. That is a great game. Still, I remember playing the one for the GameCube like ten years ago, and I it is fantastic. Yeah. I love that. Game. So much fun. Yeah, the co-op cool, great. So my brother has to come over and visit so we can play. Yeah. I heard they were doing a re-release of Time Splitters. I'd heard about something. Was it going to be on a on the play? Was it one of the PS2 to PS4 games or something? Did I mm-hmm. see that? I think maybe, maybe it's this it's week. Cool. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I can't remember. I, I would buy it definitely. It, it would be on my list. So that's it. Just a handful of stuff. Um, just a little bit here and there. So what have you guys been playing? Besides, well, you guys have been playing Zelda, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I've played is Zelda. Um, Zelda. I did play, um, I did buy Has Been Heroes uh, and picked it up the other day. I haven't really gotten too deep into it. It's really, the controls are really weird and hard to get used to on the Switch. 
Um, I played it. I played it at uh, PAX East, and I don't. I don't think I played it with a Switch controller. Yeah, oh. it, it's set up real weird. You use the triggers more than you use the face buttons. Like each face, face button buttons? is a is a, like A is for one person, B is for another person, C is for or X and Y is for another person, and it's kind of weird to kind of get used to. You got to wrap your head around. Okay, to move uh, to run, I've got to hold the left or press the left trigger, and then when I want to attack, I have to hit the A, and then to reset it, I have to hit the right trigger, and then hit L again to move. And it's just it was at the time it was just like you know what i'm i just got home from a trip and i was like i'm way too tired to try to figure out how to how to work this i was on the road for like i don't know 10 hours that day i was like i can't do it so i set it off to the side and i was like okay i'll, I'll do it later um but i mean what few minutes of it i played it seemed pretty cool it's just it's just a little complicated on the controls but i think once i get used to it it's no big deal um, probably what easier. What kind of with game is control. that? Because I've seen just very little on it. It's, it's more a... like a roguelike game almost. Mm -hmm. It's okay. yeah. Is, is I would say that's way to strategy it. It. Yeah, it's got a little bit of strategy elements to it too. Because like I got to a point in the tutorial where you had two guys and one's up here and one's down here, and you have to attack with one and then swap them. Yeah, switch the lanes. Yeah, switch lanes to get uh -huh. it to attack another because it was blocking, but you could break the block with this guy, but you couldn't with the other. But he could only yeah. do the attack. It was. And it's one of those, I mean, it's like I said, it looked really, really fun, but it's just like it's one of those things that I have to be in the right frame of mind to grasp my head around everything that's going on and pay attention, and I just haven't, yeah. haven't been able to do I that. I think I got a but. pin for playing at a PAX East. I'll have to see if I did. I think I did. Well, it was cool. fun. It was, yeah. uh, there was plenty of demo booths available and plenty of people playing it, and the people were eager to talk about it, so that's interesting. Well, it's only, and it's only 20 bucks on the Switch in yeah. that's a physical copy, so it was like, pfft. yeah. I'll buy it. You know, I'll play it eventually. But you know, to have a physical copy on the Switch for twenty dollars, I thought was pretty good. So sounds, sounds good to me. Not too bad. Mm -mm, no, I didn't think so. Um, I played a little bit. I didn't put it in the notes, but I played a little bit of the Splatoon Two um, test fire or whatever they called it, the little beta thing that they had that they would only mm -hmm. run for an hour. Yeah, that's <laughs> certain that was times of the day. <laughs> different way to do things right yeah it ran from noon to one and then like 11 to 12 that night it was all pacific time so it was like a lot of times it would just be like i would log on to the with the switch and i'd be like oh there's 30 people on oh splatoon's up well let me play it real quick while it's up <laughs> yeah look at all the people it's okay i mean it's it's a it's a neat little you know uh a shooter you know uh arena shooter thing i mean i, I thought it was all right i'd I don't know if I'll get it or not. I might. If if enough of my friends will play it, I'd probably buy it. Um, you know, it just seemed like it was really cool. We just cover everything with paint. <laughs> you know, try not to try to not to lose uh, territory or ground. Yeah. Uh, so, but I mean, it was it's definitely a a, a cool um, take on a, you know arena shooters, whatever you want to call them, competitive shooters. I call them arena mm -hmm. shooters. I don't know if they still call them that or not. They probably have some technical name for him now quake <laughs> <laughs> quake for kids uh, quake for kids uh, yeah. that's okay uh, now i want to see a new like uh, quake for like, kids like, game on the switch yeah. puzzle fighter. with the number four <laughs> well, that would be splatoon that would almost be splatoon i mean it almost would be so. but yeah so i played i did play a little bit of that and then uh well, the other one I put in the notes that I, I played for five minutes was that I Am Sutra or Satruna or however you say it. I don't know. I Am Satsuna. It's Setsuna. not that difficult. Yes, it is go. difficult for me. It's, it's very difficult. It's exactly how it's spelt. If it's, it's not in good. English, well, if, if you go by the Japanese, Japanese game, that if you go by the Japanese translation of the oh, title okay, that I bought, it's like special... special, special snow something. I forget what it is. It's a weird... It's totally weird the way it, it <laughs> translates in the title. It's like it has special twice. It's special, comma, special something snow. Is That's what when you is. know it's really good. Apparently. So, but yeah, I have, I've literally, I, I put it in just to make sure it worked. That's all I did. Cause I, as soon as I started to play it, it was very 16 bit ish RPG. And I was so like, I, yeah. Does I'll it have it. an English option? Mm -hmm. or? Oh, when you put okay. it in, it's just, it, that's what fascinated me with buying it on the switch from Japan. I bought it from Amazon Japan and I knew it had the English option on it, but I figured when the game booted up, I'd actually have to go in and choose English. It's not like that. You put the cartridge in, the cartridge goes, I am a Japanese cartridge in an English switch. 
but I have English on it, so we'll just automatically switch it all over. So the title looks English. Everything looks English. Even on the menu thing, it looks in English. Yeah, it must be yeah. some system-based thing. It looks yeah. at what your system language is and then just pops it up if it's programmed that and way. And I like that. Nice. That's really yeah. cool because it's simple. I mean, you know, yeah. well, I mean, it just saves you the thing of when you pop in a disc, go, oh, I need to choose English from the options menu or, you know, one for some. But still, to pop it in and it be fully retail like that, it's like, why don't you just release it in America? America. Just do it. Just slap another sticker on there, an English sticker on there. And that's and, like, uh, it'd be a $40 game too, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, I only paid, like that, yeah. I think I paid uh, $42 and 50 cents. That was the conversion from yen to dollar. Yeah. And but then, if they put it out here, it'd be probably 40, right? Yeah, so, I would think so. The download's 40. So, I mean, it's another game and it's cheaper than what, you know, other games are yeah. so why not? <laughs> yeah, I mean that's and that's why and that's why I ordered it. I was like, you know what? I'd rather have it physical than digital, and and why not? The only thing that's weird is the case is a little different. There's a mm. concave when well, you know when you close your case and it's smooth on the sides where you open it. This one's not. Mm-hmm. It's concave in the middle. It's like got design. a design on it. Yeah, it's design. just a little design hmm. different. And I was like, that's kind of interesting. That's weird. <laughs> Nifty. For uh, you know, just because it come from Japan, but man, I mean, I tell you what, I ordered it. I, I actually set up a Japanese Amazon account and ordered it from there and got it in four days. Um, it shipped on a cool. Sunday and I got it on a Wednesday or a Thursday. A Thursday. Nice. I couldn't believe how fast it came um, for seven dollars and fifty cents shipping on it. It's like, yeah, that's oh, really good. Crap. So I'm just going to buy all my import games from uh, Amazon <laughs> Japan now instead of going through Play yeah. Asia or something like that and pay the you know the extra price for them too. So yeah, um, but yeah, I mean it's it was super simple, uh, it was easy to do and it was cheap. It was forty dollars. I mean, why not? Um, and then I played the Persona Five. I played it for about three hours last night. We got a review copy of it in on Friday evening, really late. It's like most of the major outlets had theirs apparently weeks in advance because they started reviews oh, started cracking out in uh, like Wednesday or Thursday or something like that. Well, Giant Bomb has their like quick look stuff they do. They put their video up, and I was watching some of it. They're just starting it from mm-hmm. the beginning, and they are talking about uh, when they're recording it within that video. I was like weeks ago. Yeah. Because it really it's weird. even like one of the guys who's normally in the uh, like New York office was in San Francisco where the other guys are. They were re- recording it there, so they definitely had it way early. Yeah, it was just kind of strange. Usually, you know, all outlets get them all at the same time, but this one was like we. They said in the the email when they sent it, and I sent in for a review copy. They said it'll probably be the thirty first, and then like three days before the thirty first on the twenty seventh or something, reviews started coming out, and I'm going, well, that's weird. But it was only like major major people, you know, the push start yeah. and uh, IGN and Giant Bomb and people like that. So I'm like, well, they must have sent them out to them, you know, way early. Um, Cause it's a, it's an 80 hour. If you just fly through it, it's 80 hours. It's completion Jeez, time. If you so do all the side quests <laughs> and everything like that, it's like a hundred hours. So it's like, uh, do I really want to play, you know, and I've got the collectors. I got the expensive collectors edition. We love you much, whatever it was called edition coming in the mail but i wonder if this is going to be the witcher 3 of the personas because it seems like it's getting a lot more attention now than yeah. the previous ones have it is what little bit i've played it and i've just played just a little bit of it it is fantastic and i've played all the persona games and all the shin megami games and this one is probably the best one the most stylized um i wish they had they're bringing out a patch or a downloadable uh, content to swap the english for the japanese voice which i wish it just had that by default because i'd rather play those in japanese because it's hard for me to take somebody seriously speaking english and go my name is a you know? well i don't know that it's a take it seriously kind of game anyway <laughs> well no it's not but i mean <laughs> as far as i mean by you know like immersing me in it i you know it kind of yeah. it kind of takes you out of it but uh, but yes, I mean, so far it's fantastic. Is it, what I like about it is, is most of the Persona games that most people found really hard was it took a long time to get started. There's a mm-hmm. lot of story and a lot of build up and a lot of cutscenes and a lot of this and that and that. Not in this. In this, it's just like here we go. We're starting. We will throw you right in. We do a little tutorial. We let you pick your name and that's it. Have fun. Yeah. You know, so. 
Um, but yeah, it's it's really really cool. Yeah, from like the twenty minutes of the video I watched, I was drooling like my motion graphics animator brain was just like, ah, oh, look at all the pretty shiny stuff. Oh yeah, I mean it's it, <laughs> it's know, very slick. Yeah, it is. That's it's, the word that kept coming to my brain. It's really slick, and all the so, the cutscenes are all anime style, so they're all yeah. you know drawn anime, you know, like you're watching uh, something on uh, Crunchyroll or whatever, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it it just works. It works I've really never well. played one, but I do kind of want to play this one. It looks good. It's it's worth it. If, and what's nice is, is this one's a little I hate to say easier, um, but it's it's not as it's more. I'm trying to think of a word. It's, accessible. It's, yeah, it's more accessible to somebody that's never played the series before, and you don't have to know this big long backstory of all these Persona games to really understand the game or play it. But yeah, it, yeah. it just seems more accessible, and it's a little easier to 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 do things in it than the than the other ones were. Um, which I mean, I'm I'm all for that. In this day and age, when I've got games like Zelda that I've played for 75 flipping hours, and then I immediately go into <laughs> Persona, that's another 80 hour game. It's like I don't have time to. You throw a couple of shorter games in between and well, plunge your palate. Well, <laughs> yeah. Once I get a couple, uh, couple easy games in there, I'm not going to play the I'm not going to play the entire game through to get a review. There's just no way I'm not going to have the time. Um, but I'm going to mm-hmm. play enough of it. I mean, you know, I'm going to play a good chunk of it this week. That when I get back Thursday or Friday, I'll be like, okay, I'm ready to write my review. I know what I'm doing, what's going on. Um, but you know, it's. Whew just good there's too many good games out right now what is up with the first of the year you know, and man. then there's mass effect oh oh, oh. <laughs> let me tell you something i played that it makes out. me sad because i love the mass effect games but yeah, the more I'm i see this wait. one it's just like no black no, friday no. 30 dollars special i'm not even buying it for 30 dollars. it's called i'm waiting till it comes up for free on ea access before i even <laughs> consider playing it because i played a little bit of it on ea access the other day and the whole facial animation and everything just I couldn't, I couldn't take it. It was just like, nope, I don't like it. Well, that even seems to be the least of it. Yeah. <laughs> there was something for uh, uh, Brad Shoemaker from Giant Bomb finally put a review up. He gave it two out of five stars, and it was because the like he was more positive on it earlier, and then yeah. the longer he played it, it was just like wearing worse and worse. And he put up a video in there of this cutscene uh-huh. where models kept like flashing into T poses and then it'd be silent for a long time and then it would skip a bunch and move forward and it was just this total mess. You're like, really? A triple A game has that in there? You put it out? Like, gee, it doesn't reek of putting it out at the end of the fiscal year at all, does it guys? Yeah. Come on, EA. <laughs> well my my buddy who is the huge Mass Effect fan, he put over three hundred hours in Mass Effect two. He played it Dude. two or three or four or five times well, I played the first two twice, and then the third one I played it once. So I played a lot of Mass Effect, and I was really hoping this would be good. But yeah. I'm going to skip it. And I think there's a lot of people like me, too, who yeah. were like, yeah, Mass Effect is good. I love it, but this looks like trash. Well, he bought it, and he was playing it. He sent me a me- He just sent me a text message going, oh. And I said, what? And he's like, ah, I wish I was playing Zelda. I was like, well, then just play Zelda. He's like, nope, I'm too deep into this now. If I don't go ahead and play it, if I don't finish it, I'll never finish it. I go, if it's terrible, what's it worth it? Well, who cares? If it's terrible, who cares? <laughs> so the other day he was back on Zelda, and I went, give it up. He went, yep, I let it go. I couldn't I couldn't take it any longer. <laughs> uh, so I, after that, I was like, well, let me play the 10-minute trial. Oh, my gosh, that's it. I can't even play it for five minutes. I'm, 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 I played it for an hour and went, nope, that's it. I'm done. I'll, uh, you know, I'll buy it someday for twenty dollars to go with all the rest of them that I own, and then I'm not concerned about probably ever really playing it unless they come out with some kind of crazy patch that makes it way better. I really like Mass Effect too. It I seems really like though three. I tried to play three, yeah. and there were just some things I didn't like about it, so I never finished. It. Yeah, I really well, liked three. Set. I rebought the whole trilogy. On PlayStation Network, when it was on sale, like maybe a couple weeks ago, for like six dollars. Yeah. Like, All right, we'll get to it sometime. I almost bought it on Steam, but or PC. Yeah. But Steam, you can only get one and two, because yeah. with three was when Origin was kicking off. So then they're like, nope, only on Origin. Yeah. No. Yeah, other than that, I played Breath of the Wild for a long time. Um, <laughs> I've unlocked. We were talking before the show. I've unlocked all the map. I've uh, got all the ancient armor. 
I've got the Master Sword. I got the the, the Hyrule Shield. I got everything, and I still haven't done the first um, Divine Beast dungeon yet. <laughs> Which is funny because you think you have to gear up for it, and you don't. No, you really don't have to. But it's <laughs> the thing about it is, is I'd be going around, and then I'd unlock this town, and I'd be like, "Oh, is there a gear in this town? Oh, there is. Okay, well, let me go make some money, and then I'll come back and buy this gear. Oh, and then I unlock another town. Oh, there's gear in this town. Okay. Oh, wait, I can make my own town and buy my own house. Well, let me deck out my entire house. I did that whole quest. Then I did the whole thing where you unlock the entire city. Um, the or the entire town that you and that took like three hours <laughs> it took forever. well i kept doing that in between other stuff because it's that one's designed to send you to specific mm-hmm. places on the map it's like oh go find me somebody who's like this so it's like yeah. go over to this town oh find me you know a different person from gerudo now so go over to the desert well i had and already so unlocked I've everything that one I, yeah. I'd already unlocked everything, so it was just like, okay, I just got to transport or teleport over to here. <laughs> and, uh, okay, dude, you got to go over here. Okay, great. And I go back, and they're like, well, now I need this guy. Oh, well, that's no problem. I've already unlocked that town. And in between, oh, I need wood, but it's 10 more than last time. Yeah. And I'll add it to what I already have. Like, no, you're just doubling what Yeah. <laughs> Ah, oh, crap. I got to go but shopping. trees are actually easy because you just throw bombs at them. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I ended up uh, first. The first time I was like, I chopped them down. I went, you know what? This is stupid. Let me just set a bomb in the middle of a forest and see what happens. And then trees mm. just go. And I'm like, oh, well, that's yeah. easy. <laughs> and you don't use any durability that way. Now, right. sometimes for mining, I'll use bombs. But if you're in a precarious place, you use a weapon on it. Yeah. I usually carry a hammer around with me just for mining purposes. Um, I don't use. I it usually don't because I have so many weapon slots now that it doesn't really matter. I just yeah. use whatever big weapon I've got. Yeah. The only thing I make sure to keep on me is a torch. Yeah, yeah. I have a torch and a hammer, and then everything else. Well, and the master sword, and then everything else is just blah, whatever I got. It's whatever, whatever I can use when the master sword runs out of power for about five minutes, you know, or however <laughs> long it takes, five or ten minutes to restore itself. So I don't think you've done as many shrines as I have, which is funny. No, I've only done, I think my count was 47 or 48. Mine um, is 76. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't, hadn't got that high. Uh, That's what I keep doing is going around doing side quest stuff. I'll run into somebody and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go do this thing. And then some of those are, hey, I saw this funny thing over here in a shrine that's hidden that raises up out of the ground when you find it. And then I just keep finding all these little ones and keep raising up all my stuff so I can get more hearts and more stamina. So now I've got 16 hearts, so I've started the second row, and then I've got one, two, three, yeah, three parts of the third layer of stamina. I just so I have stamina for days. I haven't decided if I'm gonna <laughs> if I I, I I wanna fill up one whole bar of stamina, which I'm almost there, and then I'm just gonna do hearts for a while, I think. Because um, what I did was is I realized that I'd put some stamina on there and then I was like, Well, I need a couple I need three more hearts to get the master sword. I'm just gonna go to that guy and I'm gonna re roll and take three stamina and then put it on hearts and then go do the get the master There's sword a, and then come back and oh, swap it out. I have not found that guy because okay. there was a thing that told me that do like you, okay there's a dude in this place and I've gone there and I haven't even found him so do I was you like have I don't the, need it. Do you have the house? You built your yes, house. Yes I have right? a house it's okay. all furnished and everything. All right if you go to that lake that's right down from your house okay. like right over the hill there's a little black statue there that's him. Okay. Yeah it's right there. I didn't even know it was there. I walked by it a dozen times and never even saw it. And then I went, oh, there's a guy there that I can read. Well, let me just take three stamina and put it in hearts and go get the Master Sword and then come so back. So it's just a respec it. thing? You can swap yeah. it from one it, area to the it, other? It costs you money. It's it, it, oh, like, it costs you like, uh, I think, 1,000 rupees to take it and then 1,200 to put it back <laughs> mm-hmm. or something like that. So I don't need that. Yeah, well, I mean, if you don't need it. I need it. I've got, just I, just I have, like. like I said, 16 hearts, so there's 15 in one row. And then I've got plenty of food that adds temporary mm-hmm. hearts. I have one that adds 18 that I haven't <laughs> used yet. And I'm I have like, one. holy crap. I have, I have four that add 25, and I just did it one time yeah. just to see what it did. And just I have, like bar like this long and this high of hearts is <laughs> like yeah and I'm, right, I'm just saving the rest of them for the other ones so if you get that many awesome. hearts you should just like start to hulk out and glow a little bit so that all the enemies <laughs> are like oh crap yeah really <laughs> yeah but 
I've been having a blast just, with it. I just I just keep running around doing all sorts of just random stuff, finding little encampments mm-hmm. of enemies. I love how they scale it up too. So all the little like encampment things start out with just the lower level book hobbling things when you start, and the more powerful you get, they start putting the higher level dudes in there. Yeah. So that I saw a silver one the other day. I was like, oh crap! Now they're getting even harder than the black ones, and I've been having trouble with those. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It takes the... so many hits that they just wear out all your weapons. So if you don't have a lot, or you don't have some cool trick to blow them up, then you're like, "Well, I'll just avoid you guys yeah. for now." Well, once I got that uh, got that shield, I just walked around and just deflected on uh, guardians for about. I wanted to see how long it would take to break that shield. I stood in front of one guardian and he hit me 17 times before the shield <laughs> broke. I just sat there for five Whoa. minutes, just dodging it, and it was just going boom, and it was just shoot off my shield this way or shoot off that way. And then finally, on the like the 17th one, my shield went boosh, and I went all oh, crap. <laughs> <It> was... <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to see how long it would take for the shield to, to break. And then I ran back to the, the dude and had him build me another one. Man, I love the writing in this game. It's so funny. All the goofy stuff that you find for people. Even like I found one where there's some beach that was under a little bit of a cliff overhang thing. There's some girl down there. You know the little ball things that you put into the little receptacles and yeah. a lot of the puzzles. Mm-hmm. She had one of those and was like holding it, like hugging it and like talking to it and saying, it's okay. Like, I forget what name she gave it, but it was some goofy name. So you had to go on like a little quest and get pictures of guardians of three types of them to bring it back to her to distract her so she'll now be obsessed with guardians and let you have the little sphere so that you can open up the door (laughs) oh wow i don't think i've seen that one i probably went by it a thousand times and didn't even know it was there so yeah or even just all the little people in any given village that you talk to even if they just have a couple lines of dialogue because you click on them it's usually some pretty funny like all the little kids that run around usually have something funny to say well, I like the ones in the one uh, Hatno village. They're spying on the building up on the hill, and if they're running up there, like, leave us alone. We have yeah. important spy business. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other day I was laying there in bed playing it, and the wife was like, "What game are you playing?" I was like, "I'm just playing Zelda." Why? She goes, "Because they keep having weird noises. Because they go, oh, ah, yeah, <laughs> ah." Oh, you know, it's just like that game makes some really weird noises sometimes. I went, eh, yeah, it kind of does. Well, it was it like does. last night I just got fed up and I had, I wanted all the amiibo outfits. I had like the hat and the shoes of each of the uh, ones. There's Twilight, um, there's Time, there's Wind Waker, and, um, there's legend which is the original and so I that's have, what all the amiibos do is give you old link outfits if you if you have the link one it gives you the twilight outfits if you have <laughs> the 8-bit one it gives you the legend of zelda outfit if you have the tune one it gives <laughs> you the uh, wind waker outfit and i don't remember what gave you the i have to look at them I'm not sure that I care about those, so I'm oh, glad I don't have any Amiibos the to try. <laughs> Ocarina, the Ocarina of Time one gives uh-huh. you the Ocarina outfit. Yeah. Yeah, well, what's bad is you can only use them once a day, so and it's just random what it gives you. So I had hat shoes, hat shoes, hat shoes, hat shoes. I didn't have any of the tunics. So I got... Hat, I just hat got, you wear on your shoes? Yeah. So I got really ticked off last night. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to... Okay, load my save, tap my amiibo. Oh, I didn't get the tunic. Load my save, tap my amiibo. Oh, I didn't get the tunic. Load my save, tap the amiibo. Okay, I want my tunic. You know, and finally it would pop the tunic, and I'm like, okay, let's save it, grab the other one, go, okay, let's do it again until it <laughs> took me about an hour to get all of them. Just sitting there going, tap, yeah. tap, tap. and But once I get them, I'm done. The only thing that I can't get to pop is, um, what's his name, Gandor or Gondolf or whatever his name is, um, uh, the bad guy, the main boss. Ganondorf? Guy. Ganondorf. I can never, I keep wanting to call him Gandorf because of Lord Gandorf. of the Rings. But anyway, <laughs> um, his amiibo, you get us, you get his sword and it's like a tiny drop. So this afternoon after we ate dinner, we were watching TV and I was just sitting there going, I did it for two hours. Load my save, tap it. Nope. Load my save, tap it. Nope. Load my save, tap it. Nope. Literally did it till the battery ran out and still didn't get the thing to, to drop. And the only th- reason I want it is because I want it and I want to take it and hang it in my, my house. Oh yeah. Put it on. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I don't yeah, want to use it cause I don't want it, it to yeah. break, you know? And it's like a 50, I think it's a 54 strength 
or 54 uh, power attack power on the thing. It's like, is it a like great sword or something? What is it? I forget the name of it. I'll have to look it up. It actually has a name. It's a name. Yeah. Sword. Um, but yeah, I even passed up like star hill drop, uh, rarely drop star, um, Star, bits, star fragments, star things? fragments, yeah. And I passed up on those. I'm like, nope, yeah. I don't want them. I want that sword. I want the <laughs> star fragments have a use. Yeah, that's how you eventually. upgrade. Well, that and you—that's how you can upgrade <laughs> the amiibo figures. Uh, 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 armor. Ooh. Wow, how, those yeah. are expensive. Because mm-hmm. yeah. you can see them drop randomly sometimes at night. But yeah, I, I, I got never... some for a quest. I think I've got four so far after playing the game. Yeah. For a long, long time. I had that amiibo drop about four, but I kept passing on. <laughs> it's like, oh, I want that stupid yeah. sword. Yeah, so. close wise, I don't think I want anything from other games because I like all the goofy stuff from this game because it's got a completely different sort of visual identity to it. Yeah. It's not just Zelda again. It's something different. Which the is only cool. thing of those that I use is the hats. I just wear the hats with like my really? yeah. I wow. mean, if I go into battle Man. like against a guardian or something like that, I'll put on my guardian hat. Or if I you know I'm I'll put on my barbarian outfit, but if I'm just walking around doing yeah. crazy stuff, I'll have on my guardian outfit and my original Zelda cap on. It depends on what I'm doing, but most of the time right now I'm running in the full stealth suit because yeah. I love how it looks with the cool little like half face well, mask see, thing. If you have the if you have the uh, the the Shriek or Shrek, however you say his name, Amiibo, Sheik, Sheik, whatever, you drop his. You, he drops. These aren't hard names, John. They're Come hard on. for me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you you, uh, you drop his mask to wear with that outfit. Yeah. So. But uh, I like that because I've got them upgraded twice now so that I get the set bonus. So at nighttime you uh, move faster yeah. for that one. And then I have the full climbing gear set so I can just spam the jump button as much as I want now because I have a huge stamina right. pool. And if you have that full set, it minimizes how much it takes from the jump. Mm-hmm. So... You could jump just boop, 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 up a really long way, so it makes climbing a whole lot faster. I own most of the Zelda Amiibos. There's a couple of the Smash ones I don't have, but that's what I have this for. Because <laughs> this is nice. an Amiibo. I didn't buy any of the Breath of the Wild Amiibos because I just use this. So I just sit in front of the computer, load it, <laughs> tap it, load the next one, tap it. And go. John, what's that amazing product you have? Uh, it's, it's called Nemeo is what it's called. And I think they run about sixty bucks if you can still buy them. I guess you can still buy them. I have no idea. Um, Store all your amiibos digitally. Yeah, pretty much. They're all on my PC, and I just load them up to a chip <laughs> and go. I have another one. I have this one. This is a. Uh, this is the N2 Elite. I don't have a way to update the software on it, but this one. This one is one that has a, a clicker on it. So you can load 200 Amiibo just on this one, and then to change it, you just click the button on the side of it. But it needs an update, and you can only update it on Android phone, and I do not have an Android phone to update it on. So You could always send it to me, and I could update it for you, send yeah, it back. I might have to do that. Because uh, it would be easier than going upload one. Tap it, upload it. Yeah. But yeah. of course, now that I've got all the outfits except that one thing that I want, I'm pretty much done with Amiibo. So, um, that's, well, this one, this one's my Wolf Amiibo because that's pretty cool. You could actually, you can actually use this and the Wolf from, uh, Twilight Princess will come and fight with you until he dies. And you can feed him, like, food and give him, like, 2,500 hearts or 25 hearts or whatever. If you've got food that you can eat that give you hearts, you feed it to him, he'll get hearts. So the more hearts you give him, the, the longer he'll stay. Which I actually have that amiibo, but he's over there. I left him in the box because he just looks so darn cool in that collector's <laughs> box. I, I didn't know. want to take him out. Yeah. But Nintendo's kind of sneaky about things. You know, the Skylanders, you can use them in the package and not take them out. The amiibo, you can't. They put a piece of um, me- uh, magnetic tape underneath of it so it won't work through the box. Mm. So you have to open it, which is kind of sneaky. Uh, well, it makes you have to buy it. You can't just go to the store and yeah, tap it, the it box. Makes, <laughs> it makes you have to open it. Well, it makes you have to open it if you want to use it. So yeah. like everybody that has them still in the packages, if they ever want to use them in games, they have to open them because they won't work in the game, which to me kind of stinks. I mean, I would like to keep them in the packages, but use them. So, 
Um, but yeah, so what have you played anything else, Nathaniel, other than uh, Breath of the Wild? I have played some more Horizon Zero Dawn. I've platinumed, platinumed oh, it. Oh, look at you. Yeah. It's actually not that difficult. Oh, really? So it's my first ever platinum. Not mine, bad. Are all, mine are all Telltale games, <laughs> except for. Uh, I, had a, I have Destiny. Yeah. I did Platinum Destiny. So I have my PS3. I played Uncharted and a few other games on there, but I never platinum them because they were difficult ones, especially like yeah, Uncharted. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not playing multiplayer stuff just to get that. So I never just bothered even going for it. But after I beat the game, I had like three trophies left. So I was like, eh, that's easy enough. I know what two of them are because I have two, these two little side things that I just didn't finish up. So I'm pretty sure those are trophies. Yeah. And then I have one that was sort of a collectibles thing that I had to finish to run around and destroy some test dummies or something. <laughs> like uh, practice dummies. I still haven't bought it yet. I want. I'm. I'm going to buy it. I just. I don't know when I'm going to play it. And now that Persona's out, it's like I really don't know when I'm going to play it. And because I was breaking down games with my buddy the other day, it's like okay, there was Zelda in March. April is Mario Kart and Persona. I can't remember what May was. June was Valkyra Chronicles. July was. Uh, May was Prey for me. That's the only game I know of in May. I have, yeah. to, I have to look back through my list of what it was. I will say Bump Horizon up. It is that good. It is almost as good as Zelda. Yeah. It, it does different things than Zelda does to succeed. Like Zelda where it is just like explore, do whatever you want kind of stuff. But the story is kind of, eh, it's all right. But it's just a Zelda story. Horizon has the best and the most interesting kind of world building in a video game I played in a long time, yeah. probably since the original Mass Effect. Because yeah. the original Mass Effect had just this really cool universe that, with especially if you read all the codec and series and see what all the different alien species were, they did put a lot into building kind of the universe of that game. Yeah. And it was a really cool amalgamation of different styles of sort of like Star Trek and Star Wars and a few other sci-fi things mushed together. It was really neat. Yeah. This one has some really, really cool, interesting wrinkles to the way that they put this world together. Yeah. It's a very cool game. I, I, it looks awesome, and it looks like it would be right up my alley, and I and, do want to play it. Another thing it has over Zelda is the combat is so much more fun. Yeah, I could see. Like the combat in Zelda is fun, but it's not as deep or layered right. as the yeah. stuff. Really, I mean, you can bring your gadgets into it sometimes in Zelda. It's more about situational, like, oh, here's this thing I could drop a boulder on somebody. Right. Whereas with Horizon, it's a lot of okay, these different realm machines have different weaknesses, and I can exploit it in these different ways with the weapons they have, and. Yeah. It's very much a fun action game. It's on my list. Is Persona, it's very good. Persona, Mario Kart in April, Fire Emblem in May, Valkyra Chronicles in June, and that was as far as I got. Uh, I think, <laughs> I think uh, Sonic comes out in June as well, June or July. Um, but I, I, I didn't, I didn't oh, go. Oh yeah, in, I didn't go that new Sonic game. I, yeah, I have it on pre-order oh, just because I wanted the statue thing. That's you want the, yeah, yeah. It, I know I played that at East and it it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I it really liked really it. Really cool. Um, so I think it's I in got June, it huh? It's a good time for it to come out. Yeah, I think it's Summer's June or July. I have to check, but it's, mm. it's pre-order. Yeah. Is it more than thirty? Um, I don't know. I did the collector's edition and it was sixty dollars for for the collectors, but it's actually a digital only. It's a collector's edition <laughs> with a digital code. It's not coming out physically. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, and if if it. If it if it wasn't the Sonic on the Genesis and you push the button and it did the little Sega, I would never really buy it. <laughs> but yeah, I just want it to throw over there on the shelf with the other Sega girls and things like that. It's like, oh, I gotta have it just because it's it's a cool little set piece. Um, but I mean, other than that, it's like, nah, it's uh, there's I mean, there's just there's something every month at least for me. It's like I gotta squeeze in Horizon at some point. And then it's, Sonic Meat. Yeah, so, I'm sure there'll be a bunch of smaller things here or there. And if the biggest thing for me will be Prey, if that turns out to be a really good game. It's looking it like sounds it. Sounds yeah, like I, it I, will I got be. A, I got it yeah. pre ordered. It looks really cool. It's definitely one that I'm, I'm keeping an eye on anyway. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love Dishonored and the other, you know, Deus Ex, those style of games. So mm -hmm. if they put out another one, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> Especially since it sounds very much like a System Shock vibe is what everybody describes it a lot of, which is funny because there's like two different System Shock actual games coming <laughs> at some point. Like one of them was Kickstarted and there's a System Shock 3, I think, coming at some point. I think so, yeah. 
there's like a remake of the first, and then there's a System Shock 3 that are both in the works, and then there's this Prey that looks kind of like a, let's take the ideas of it and make sort of a similar sort of vibe game. Yeah. I, it's, it's like, sure, why not? I'll take it. Yeah. I mean, it looks really cool. I'm anxious to see what, well, I'm anxious to see what you think about it. I'll let, let you tell me what you think about it. <laughs> I liked the first Prey. The only part I hated about it was all the the spinning upside down stuff, which they, yeah. it's not oh, any yeah, of that, he, which is good. Well, this sounds like it's just like, nope, we're just taking the name. That's about it. <laughs> That's Man, good. This Sonic, is a good idea. <laughs> Sonic Mania's release date's all over the place. Sites are like, oh, it's in the fall. No, it's coming out in like may no it's it's, it's in the summer whatever amazon has is the right release date because amazon was... amazon says may 31st yeah and that seems that's what best buy says too so and I, I think that's what it right is because that's i think that's what i heard that uh it was because it was originally like supposed to be like this month or something like that and they pushed it back for some reason i don't know why and how much is just the digital? I don't know. I don't know how much is just know? the digital. It's because I just bought the <laughs> collectors. I didn't even... all, I can, all I can find is the collectors. And <laughs> I'm yeah, guessing it's, it's probably cool. like a $20 that, uh... game, I guess. I'm guessing that's probably what I'll it is. Good, I'll look good on my shelf. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the only reason why I'm getting this, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to go over there on the yeah. shelf with my Genesis and my Sega Genesis girl that's sitting up there next to her. You can see her right here. <laughs> <laughs> Screen. Right there. If you're looking on the stream, right there. That's that tiny, her. tiny, that little, tiny like thing four pixel there. blob. Yeah, zoom in on that and you can see her. And then down here is Saturn, and I'm still waiting. Enhance. On... Yeah, enhance. <laughs> oh, man. That would be great. I could just go. You could see her right behind me. But, yeah, so that's the... Uh... That's the plan with that one. I had to have it. I just had to have it. I was like, I can't believe I'm buying a collector's edition for a <laughs> digital game, but whatever. I got to have <laughs> You're part of the problem. I am. Part, I, I, no, <laughs> okay. I, I, we'll go on. We'll go to part of the problem here in this news story. That's This is this is the, some of this is part of the problem. So, but yeah, we'll go on with the news. We'll get into the news. There's some interesting things. Let me, let me see here. I got my little, I got my little pre-order bonus for my Destiny 2 yesterday my little Cade action figure that you get at GameStop if you pre-order him Woo! He's, <laughs> he's giving you the thumbs up yeah thumbs up uh, telling you to, and telling you to buy it yeah he's telling you to buy it I uh, uh destiny 2 release date time everything was uh, beta was announced uh, everything so um, they released this uh cinematic trailer the other day which uh was pretty funny actually I like the uh, the Cade character um that uh fillion does um he's very he's very good with him and i'm a hunter so he's the one that i talk to all the time in the game when i go turn in things and do my story stuff he was the one i always talk to so um but it will be um the game comes out september 8th which is pretty smart on their part that is a friday um so everybody will have the weekend to play um, play the game because if it's any anything like my buddies when Destiny came out, they took a week's worth of vacation to play it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I told them I said, "Look, I had Spinner asked me on Twitter the other day. He was like, so you put like, you know, six hundred hours or five hundred hours into Destiny, uh, the original. You gonna put that much in it again?'" I was like, "Well, technically, I put in six hundred and eighty-five hours, <laughs> um, but no, I'm not putting that much time in." It. The reason I'm not putting that much time in is because it actually I was actually unemployed at the time that game came out, so I had a lot of free time on my hands, which I don't have anymore. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's going to be available on PS4, Xbox One, and PC this time, which is kind of cool. A lot of PC players have been wanting it on uh, PC, so that's pretty nice. Um, it's uh, Let's see, the open beta will be in the summer, um, and like I said, it's available for pre-order now. Uh, there will be a live stream on May 18th with the first gameplay footage. Um, that's going to be the interesting thing to see. You know, is it just a cookie cutter paste of? It's know, not going to be showing you much of anything. It's just going to be like, look, it's Destiny. You shoot stuff. I bet it's going to look a lot like the gameplay examples before Destiny 1 came out. Probably. If I had to guess, that's probably what it's going to be. Spinner, you, you ask in the chat, Spinner asked if the um, you could bring your character over from Destiny 2. Yes, you will move your character over from to Destiny 2, but none of the weapons 
um, come with it. None of the money comes with it. Mm. None of the armor comes with it. Nothing that you, my understanding is, is nothing you earned in the game will come over, which is kind of disappointing because that was supposed to be the big thing. And when they announced Destiny 1, they're like, oh, when the second one comes out, you're going to be able to bring all your stuff that you earned, all your recognition, everything like that. Yeah, but that doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, you it, can't really do that and then call it a sequel if you're just bringing it over. There's then a all couple, the people who didn't play Destiny 1 are going to come in and be like, well, well, I didn't get to bring anything. Well, that sucks. And yeah. they're all super advantaged because they have all this stuff. So it's like, there's no way to really make that work. There's a, there's really, there was really a few game or a few weapons that I would love to bring over to Destiny 2, which I'm hoping maybe they just redo in Destiny, uh, Destiny 2, which would be fine. I loved my Fate Bringer pistol. It was awesome. But if you see that, if you watch that cinematic trailer, they kind of say, everything was destroyed. All your guns were destroyed. All your this was destroyed. All your that was destroyed. It's like, oh, okay. So that's that's the way you're just going to write it off. Oh, it was just all destroyed, and you can't bring it with I, you. It's just too yeah. Hard. I bet it'll be like the Halo games, where the sequel will have some guns that are completely different, yeah. some guns that are similar but not exactly the same, and then maybe a couple that are the exact same kind of gun. Who knows? We'll see. Um, there'll be two expansions, uh, major expansions um, that. Um, it's uh, one of them will, it says would they, that the expansions will contain brand new story missions, co-op activities and multiplayer new weapons and gear, just like they did in destiny one. That's exactly what it did in destiny one. Um, which if you buy the limited edition, which is only available at GameStop for a hundred bucks, you get the season pass or the expansion pass and the game, which is what I did, because if I'm going to buy the expansion pass anyway, I might as well buy the physical steelbook edition of the game and have it, because it's going to cost $100 either way. Um, they also had a flipping collector's edition. It was, me and my buddy got in a big discussion about this. It was like, it's a $250 uh, oh, collector's Lord. edition. Um, Jeez. yeah. And I, and I just, and I just said, no, I said, there is no way I'm spending $250 on a for console. that much. You should get a destiny console. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's what I was. That was my thing with him. I was like, I can buy a PS4 for $200. And he's like, no, or for $250. He's like, no, you can't. I'm like, dude, they have been on sale yeah. for since before I've Christmas. I've seen them for $200. Yeah, like, for just $250 recently. with like a bunch of games with it. Yeah. And yeah. the only the only thing that you get different from the collector's collector's edition, you get the collector's box. Um, you get this fancy front, they call it a frontier bag. It's like a, it's like a bag. It'll actually hold like a 15 inch laptop. I mean, it's nice if you need something like that, but at $250, eh, pretty much Not that much money. Nice. No, I mean, and there's some digital stuff that you'll get with it that you won't get, um, you know, in the, uh, limited edition and, uh, you still get the expansion pass and everything like that. But it's like, my gosh. Yeah, oh, screw you, Activision. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> nope, I'll just do the the $100 limited edition, and I'm fine with that. Because like I said, if you're going to buy if you're going to buy the expansion pass anyway, if you're going to buy into it, you might as well spend $100 off the bat and be done with it. Um, then you don't have to worry about it. But, I mean, it literally, it just comes with a, a few little things that you can't get with the collector's edition and that bag. And I don't think that bag's worth no $100. It's cool and all. I mean, I guess if you're a hardcore destiny person maybe but for me so far it seems like no. they're just selling this to destiny people mm -hmm. yeah I mean, plus people who are kind of into destiny but wanted to play it on pc that's sort of all they've done so far yeah i am kind of excited that it's coming to pc that's that's nice well, that's you know, cool yeah there's a nice. lot of people that's been wanting it on pc and and things like that so good for them to to put it on pc um <laughs> I would almost prefer to play that kind of game on PC just because, you know, it's to me, mouse and keyboard is, you know, a little easier with first person shooters than controller, but destiny. Well, also really if they're going to throw in some MMO stuff like chat in there mm -hmm. on PC version, it would be good to have that. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. So, uh, slash we'll, dance, slash dance. Yeah. <laughs> We'll we'll hear more about that on the 18th of May. So we've got a couple, uh, yeah. you know, a good month or month or the two. The thing months. I want to know that we're not going to know until it comes out is how much more story is going to be in this one, if any. 
Because yeah. that's kind of like the big takeaway from when he came out was there's not really hardly anything here from what we expected from what they were kind of hyping it up to yeah. be. Yeah, and there wasn't. There was there was a story. It was a very vague story, and when you when you completed it, you were kind of like, okay, that was it. That's weird. Well, what, there seems to be more gaps and holes. Oh, I've got to go find hidden things in the game and unlock <laughs> it, and then go on this phone app and read to figure out the rest of the story. Okay, that just seems... And honestly, I, my buddies would find those things and be like, hey, there's a fragment over here. Uh, okay, I'll go get it because you showed me where it was at. Uh, <laughs> other than that, I'm not going to I'm not gonna break my neck to go out and, and hunt for them. But they were, they were, I mean, they were hardcore about it. They probably put in a thousand hours in it. And I, you know, I was, I kind of got to a point there where it was like, eh, I'm kind of done with Destiny. And they've kind of, they still play it. And I'm just like... I can only bang my head against that wall so many times, and yeah. I think I've banged it all I could. If they make it like the division, where how I played it was spend the twenty thirty hours doing the campaign, single mm-hmm. player, don't do any of the multiplayer stuff, and have a lot of fun with it because that's good, you know, a decent enough story, and the shooting was fun. Yep. But also the people who want to go and do all the multiplayer, you know, grindy stuff can do that too. If they can pull that off, then I think they'll be pretty sitting pretty good. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to play it. I want to see how the story goes. You know, I invested that much time in the first one. I can, yeah. I can invest another 30, 40, 50 hours in the second one and still feel <laughs> like I've, you know, I, it ain't going to be no 600 hours. I can tell you that right now. Unless, unless something happens and I hit the lottery and I don't have to work again, then fine. We'll, we'll play it all day long, but that ain't going to happen. I'm not counting on that. So. Um, what I think would really be cool is if Rocket League uh, comes to Switch. That would be really awesome. Uh, I would love to play that game handheld. That'd be great. Yeah, it would be. Um, so the company behind Rocket League are looking into seeing what kind of demand there is for Rocket League on the Switch, and they may bring it. Switch, I'm, I'm all for that. I would buy it again on the Switch. Absolutely. Um because I really liked Rocket League and to be yeah. able to play it handheld anywhere I'm at. It's one of those chicken versus the egg things where it's like mm-hmm. there's not that many people on here, so the demand might not be there, but having Rocket League on there would help with some of the demand because people would be like, oh, I want to play that on the Switch, you know? Yeah, exactly. So uh, Technically-wise, would be more, I think, if they can pull it off while doing all the other stuff that they're doing for the main game, because they're adding new content every you know month or two right. quite a bit they plus all just the general support and they're doing that for three platforms now yeah. so adding a fourth one that is technically quite different from the other ones and they're not that great of a team yet i mean they have built up since they started so i don't know they have plenty of money to do it so i think right. it's more technical hurdles if they can or not yeah i will see um, I would I would buy it though if they would put it on there. Sure, I'd absolutely buy it. I love my. If Switch, I had to I guess, it. I say they would because they've been selling more of that game as time goes on than when it first started. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it really is. But you know, I, I love my Switch. I love playing on my Switch. I've played more on my Switch. It was funny when I got that review code for Persona and I popped. Uh, or I downloaded it, came down Saturday morning, and went, okay, I'm going to play something on PlayStation 4, and I held that PlayStation 4 controller in my hand and went, this feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like, awkward. Can I have my Xbox One controller on my PS4? I've kind of gotten used to that button layout, and it's like, you know, those <laughs> control sticks lay out, and then when I held the PlayStation 4 controller for a couple, for about 20 minutes, it was like, okay, i got to get used to holding this thing again. Let me get back in the groove to it. I've really come to really like the Switch Pro Controller. So, of course, when you play 75 hours of Zelda, that will do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good controller. Yep. Um, Telltale Games Guardians of the Galaxy Episode 1 uh, will be released uh, April 18th. Um, Imminently. Yes. So, it will be... The title is Tangled Up in the Blue, um, which they released a trailer. Um, of course, they're fighting Thanos. Who else would they fight in... Guardians of the Galaxy. Sure, there'll be a few others. But. I'm sure. But it <laughs> looks really, really good. I mean, just the cinematic trailer looks really cool, looks fun. If it's anything yeah, that like that. Yeah, the universe Batman. fits Telltale very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got the very kind of goofy, irreverent comedy, but it's still a little bit of, you know, the darker humor and stuff in there, too. Yeah. 
So, so kind of both sides of Telltale can feed into the same thing. Yeah, it'll be really cool. Um, it's coming out on PC, uh, Xbox, and PlayStation 4, um, and iOS as well. I've heard that there may be a version come later for the Switch. Um, nothing has been confirmed, though. If, I, if it comes out for the Switch, I figure it'll probably be after all the episodes release. They'll probably do a physical release Something. for the Switch. I would say. Yeah, be cool. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, it looks really cool. just happens to be just in time for the Guardians of the Galaxy movie that's coming out in May. So, Like a couple yeah. weeks before. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Who, Who would have guessed? Yeah, I never would have known that it was going to come out. Um, <laughs> and what you want to bet a couple weeks after perfectly. the movie, they have another episode. I Ooh. bet. I bet they oh, will. No. I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. Um, but yeah, it looks cool. It's another Telltale game that I'll buy and play. Just you know, I really yep. enjoyed Batman. I thought Batman was really awesome. The only thing I didn't like about Batman was the bugs in it. Yeah, it was hit or miss. There's a couple episodes that played just fine, and a couple of them for me were just like hit a couple of bad bugs in it. But you that's know, a Telltale game. On Xbox One, I play. I played it on Xbox One. Never had a problem with it at one time. Yeah. It never did anything, which it surprised me because everybody else was having issues with this and issues with that. Mm. But I didn't. I didn't see anything with it. So. I must have just got lucky. Telltale either. games are weird because sometimes, yeah. yeah, I've gotten lucky on ones in the past that people have said were really, you know, unstable and I was fine. So it was just kind of luck of the draw, I guess. Yeah. yeah. You happen to catch it on the right day. On Thursdays, it runs terrible, but if you play it on a Friday, it's yeah. fine. It's so <laughs> weird. It's so weird, but they're still good, though. I mean, they're still good. Even with the glitches, they're usually good. So. Yeah. I mean, I like Batman to the point that I wish they would make a Batman movie like that that was yeah. focused a lot more on the what Bruce Wayne is about versus yeah, just, versus what Batman here's is Batman about. punching some people, Rawr, I'm Batman. That's yeah. about it that we've gotten for the last several movies. I need to go back and play it again uh, and choose a whole different path this time. I, I usually try to play, what I usually do is I play them on each system as well, and that way I can do different on different systems. So I probably need to get it on uh, PlayStation 4 and play it through that way, which I think I can get a retail disc version of it for under twenty dollars now. So, yeah, uh, pick it up and and play it uh, again, or maybe they'll bring it out on the Switch. Maybe I'll just wait and play it on the Switch. Why not? Um, uh, so a leaked marketing material has appeared on a YouTube channel called Family Video Gamers. Um, according to this, it's a promotional material for and a steel book design uh, for the next. Uh, installment of Call of Duty, which sounds like it could be going back to World War II. Um, I'm okay with this if it is, because that sure. was one thing. That was one thing I did. It could be pink ponies riding on unicorns and yeah. they're fighting elephants for all I care about Call of Duty at this point personally. So like they can do whatever they That's want. It. He's in. He's gonna. <laughs> It's a pink pony. He's got it. All right, well, hang on. Yes. I make, I got All right. If there's a sure. call of call of duty with pink ponies riding unicorns fighting elephants, then I'm in. Hang on. I got to make. Till that note. happens, no. I got to make a note. <laughs> call. Pink of ponies. Duty. Pink polka dotted ponies. They'll just keep making it more complicated for you. With pink ponies. <laughs> I got to shorten that. I got to shorten that up for a title, but it's that's the way it's. Nice, be. that works. I got to put that. I'll put that note over there. I'll, I'll figure that out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but that was when I enjoyed the Call of Duty games, the single player Call of Duty games with the the World War II stories in them. I enjoyed those a lot. Um, but what's funny is is the ones that I enjoyed the most were the you know, Call of Duty Two. I guess it was the first one on the three sixty. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember. I didn't really like World at War. Um, what? if they, That's I, World I, War II. I, I, yeah, it was World War Two, but I didn't like it. It was too over the top. It didn't feel. It felt. It felt more like a Arnold Schwarzenegger action movie than something that had a good story and was very cohesive and more realistic, um, like the original Call of Duty was. Um, if, but if if they go back to World War Two and, and 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 the story in it's really good, I'm interested. I'm probably not interested to buy it, but I would definitely red box it and play it for a weekend or something like that. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. At this point, even if it's in World War Two setting, just the style of here's a Call of Duty campaign. Yeah. I'm kind of over that at this point. Yeah, and, and I, that's I keep thinking. Yeah. I see the modern ones on sale, and I'm like, I'm kind of interested, but like you, John, maybe as a rental, because I'm like, if I buy it, you know, maybe I like the single player, but then here comes the multiplayer, and I get destroyed. Well, and I played, 
what was the the first one on the PlayStation Four? It was it was Ghost. The, 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 yeah, Ghost. I played that Ghost. Was terrible. And it wasn't that great. And then I got the next one. I got a code for it. I bought it when Advanced I was Warfare. yeah, Advanced Warfare when, or Warfare when I was uh, on the Sony retail site. I got a code for that with a season pass and everything. I literally played it five minutes and went. Uh, that one no. was supposed to be pretty good though too for reception to it yeah i couldn't get but even if it's it. good if you just if that's you're tired of that formula yeah. like whatever like, you know I what like it is one and two, but it's been such a long time yeah and i i'm not much into the modern day war movie or war games i would I, if i'm going to play it I, I like the world war ii world war one that's what i liked about battlefield uh, yeah. Going back to World War Two yeah. or World War II. I mean, we're kind of at the point now where, like, modern warfare, the first one coming out, changing things up because it was so many just World War Two games after World War Two game, where now we're so many modern warfare type games over, over and over. We've had so many of them, and then Battlefield One shows up, and it's a breath of fresh air. Now maybe yeah. Call of Duty is going to go back to old again. It's like, oh, yeah. got to switch up the formula. People are getting bored. Yeah, well, so we're kind know, of at that turning point again. Modern warfare was my favorite of the modern games. I just just love that story and setting, you know, in Chernobyl yeah. and all that. I really liked that. I thought it was really, really cool. Um, the second one was okay. The third one, I just played it to finish out to see what the story was. <laughs> it's like the rest of it. I, I really, at that point, I just kind of not cared anymore. But it was like, well, I've already played one and two. I might as well see how they wrap this thing up. And then after they got done, I was like, nah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, if they go, if they go back to World War II, I'll, I'll, I may give it another shake. But like I said, if uh, it, it won't be a purchase, it'll be a, a yeah. red box or a GameFly rental or whatever, whatever I can, wherever I can get it from, um, won't be a won't be a full purchase. Um, last story, I, and I saved it for last. GameStop to shut down a hundred plus stores. Uh, honestly, to me, this is just. Um, but if you look at the article thing, isn't that like 2% or something yeah, of their stores anyway? So it's not even that big of a number. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really total. not. Ugh, you know, the problem with this is the internet went crazy over it. Just like <laughs> all sorts of stuff. Yeah, you know, and, and this and this is this is why I put this story in here because it, it aggravated Death me. To the, yeah, it aggravated me to the point the minute it came out, they had their earnings review, and what it was was, you know, they were down, I think, 13% from last quarter. Uh, they didn't have a strong holiday season, not like they had before. But, I mean, there wasn't a lot of blockbuster titles that came out like there was the year before. There was, there was a few, but not like it usually is. Um, you know, no Assassin's Creed, no... Uh, there was a couple other games that kind of got pushed back there that yeah. were supposed to come out in, you know, November, December that didn't. Um, you know, but when they, when that, when that came out, you know, they said, well, our stock has dropped like 31% over the past year. Um, and they have, you got to remember they have six over 6,600 stores globally and 4,400 of those stores are in the United States. Um, and anybody that lives... Ones- What's that? Close to all the ones in Puerto Rico recently. Yeah, like within the last year. Well, I mean, it's only a two or three percent, like we said, two or three percent uh, of the closures. But the thing about mm-hmm. it is, is what I wonder, and nobody has really come out and said, is I wonder how many of those stores are in an area like, and Nathaniel knows, living in Cary, Durham. There's like 14 stores within like a <laughs> six mile radius of where he's at. I, when I was in. Living in Randleman, there was one in Randleman. There was okay. I could drive less than twenty minutes, and I could hit eight Game Stops in a in you know like a ten mile in a thirteen mile radius of where I lived, yeah. and that's too many. Um, and you know, surely not all those stores can be profitable. Um, you know, now maybe in a major metropolitan city like Chicago or New York, you have you know several on this side, several on that side. But you know, there was there's three stores in greensboro on the same street wow one at, one's in a mall yeah. one's in a strip mall uh strip plaza where the costco's at and one's a quarter mile up the other way where walmart is at 
I mean, that is three stores within less than a mile of each other. Yeah. That's when crazy. I was living in uh, Winston Salem, mm-hmm. they had a spot in town that was like that, where there was three really close together, yeah. and then of course one's on other parts of town as well. Right. And I, and I it's ridiculous how many game stops there are. It's yeah. like they're trying to be beat out yeah. Starbucks or something. Yeah, and I, I never understood that. And all they are is is there is when when they bought Funko Land, uh, EB Games, Software Etc. They didn't close any of those stores they, unless they were in a mall. All. That, that was usually the only way they closed them. They just consolidated. Um, they just changed them over and they left them like that. And I don't see how three stores in less than a mile are profitable. All of them. I, I know the one in Four Seasons is profitable. It's Four Seasons Mall in North Carolina in Greensboro. That place makes a ton of money and everybody goes there. I understand yep. that. But, you know, I mean... Come on. I mean, you know, they're not closing the store. We have we have one store here. We have two stores in Huntington, West Virginia, which has maybe 50,000 people, and they're within four miles of each other. It's like, mm-hmm. why do you have – you have one in the mall, and then you have one four miles down the road. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. If they and had I'm, fewer stores in the same area, maybe that one store instead of mm-hmm. five would have more stock of things exactly. because they don't have to spread it out. Exactly. Crazy. You know, and, and I think I think that's that's what I took away from this report is maybe these are the hundred and – I think one report said it was 100 plus. Another report said it was like 190 stores. Yeah. I think this is the stores that they're closing. They're closing these ones that are in town that they have like five or six of them in one area that they really yeah. don't need to have. Around we don't need me, to have eight. We'll just have four. Right. <laughs> yeah. Around me, everything's pretty pretty scattered. There's one in the mall and then one maybe like a quarter of a mile away in a little strip mall, but that's it. Everything else is scattered, the five yeah. or six in the area. Yeah, it was – It's in different areas, it's different. In North Carolina, where I was at, it was bad because you could just throw a rock hit one. And it's <laughs> – you know, and you live – I live here, and it's like, okay, we got one across the river in Ohio, which is, you know, five miles away. Then the next one's 45 miles away. The next one's 35 miles away. The next one's 50 miles away. Okay. And they're more spread out. It kind of makes things a little harder when you want something that's out of stock because then all of a sudden yeah. you, you know you either have to wait or you have to go 45 minutes in the other direction to get one yeah not, but, not the common stuff yeah but it's it's still it's not that big a deal i just you know, if we had two in our little area it's like why would we have two uh, i don't understand uh, and i just i never understood that living in greensboro why they had so many stores in greensboro and i actually stopped at my old well one of my old stores when I was, I've been working down there, so I stopped in Randleman on the way through and, and saw the guys at the Randleman GameStop, and they're talking about, well, we don't have enough game advisors to stock our stores. We don't have enough people to work. We don't have enough store managers Jeez. to work because they're spread so thin. They're not hiring because they don't have the money to man their stores. It's like, well, then you're going to have to shut some stores down that are not necessary, and I can think of about three of them that are not necessary in that town. Um so I think that's what it is, but a lot of people just absolutely jumped on this story. A lot of YouTube people going, "That's it! I told you that GameStop was going to die. It's going away, <laughs> and it's it yeah, and it's the best thing ever that GameStop is going away because they're a terrible company and they're awful people to work for. And I'm glad. And I told you all years ago that they were going to go away. And yeah, I'm like, some of that's not exactly you know untrue. No, but that doesn't mean that they're people dying. People there and the people that have jobs. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I worked yeah. I worked for GameStop for five years. You know, Robert still works for GameStop. I mean, is it the best company in the world to work for? No. Is it a good paying job? Well, depending on the area you live in, it can be. Yeah, I mean, it can be. Yeah. If you're a manager, it is. Um, You know, if you're a third key, it's okay. But other than that, you know, uh, everybody else is part time. And a lot of those part time guys there are just there for the discount. And they're there because they like games. You know, they work four hours a week. Um, you know, but to, to, to dogpile on GameStop, which, but that is the clicky bait thing to do right now is to bash GameStop because they're the only ones to bash. You know, if we had, if we still had EB games at least in GameStop and they were butting each other's heads all the time. And then the story came out and GameStop said, Oh, we're closing 50 stores. Then I could see, Oh, well, yeah, GameStop's terrible. We go, we'll go to EB and blah, blah, blah. You know, but I remember those days where you had EB Games, uh, Babbage's, Software yeah, Etc., <laughs> Funko Land. You know, I worked Funko at Land. I worked at Funko. I worked at Funko before I ever worked for GameStop. You know, and, but you know those days are another, gone. They bought another retail store too, right? I do not remember what it was called. I know they bought they bought I know they bought Boutique, Software Etc. 
uh, Babbage's. Lots Funko and lots Land. of them. I like I liked uh, Electronics Boutique because they would that sell was, used mm-hmm. PC games, and th- I love that. That's and where I did all my shopping. The code would work, and I'd be like, Babbage's oh, just did too back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I always I always did. We had in on the mall down the road here in Huntington. We had Babbage's and we had uh, EB Games. Those were the two we had, and you'd always we'd always bounce between the two. Um, but I, I always did a lot of shopping at Babbage's um, back in the day. And then when we go to Columbus or something like that, they'd have Funko Land. I'm like, ooh, Funko Land carries retro games. Let's go, <laughs> you know. It's, and when I, when I first got a job there, when we moved to Greensboro and they had a Funko Land, I was just like, oh, this is great. And then GameStop come in and bought them, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> it stinks now. I don't know. It's, it's really, really strange that every, and that's what people do. They just dogpile on it and it is what it is. And now GameStop is an easy target. So is. any little thing, and it's the internet. So mm-hmm. any little thing, there'll be plenty of people to jump Anybody on. Anybody can get angry. I look, yeah. you know, I watch YouTube videos all the time and I look through my feed and the, when that announcement came out, it was like 17 of them. <laughs> oh, GameStop is burning. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm not even clicking on it and giving you the burning. hit. Grab I mean, your pitchforks. Yeah, ah! and your torches. Oh, it just it just killed me. It just absolutely killed me. <laughs> but that's all I got news-wise. Is all that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't uh, got anything else. I'm pretty much. Yeah, I don't have either. I don't think we missed anything. There wasn't a whole lot uh, news newsy-wise this week. Um, we have still got the giveaway going. I think it's. I have to check. I think it's uh, at the time of this recording. You got ten days still to enter our Bethesda E3 giveaway. Um, if you follow us on, uh, Twitter, um, you can find the link there, or if you go to the website and click on the show notes, it will be there. It's a big, long gleam thing that I'm not going to try to say out loud because nobody's going to remember it anyway. Um, but you can click on the link there and, um, and enter. There's, um, there's still, I think 10 days to enter. So, you know, it's a, it's a cool little prize pack. Everything that they gave away at the E3 press conference. Thanks to, um, Sean who, uh, who writes for us that went to E3 last year. He went to the event and he sent me that. And I've still got a couple, I've still got a couple other things that he sent that I, I didn't put in the pack. I have those big, those big, uh, bags they give away. I've got a great big final fantasy one to give away. Um, and I got some other stuff nice. under there. So, and I, I've got some uh, codes for stuff too uh, that we got. You know, just yeah. winning random contests on Twitter and stuff. I got a stack of like mostly PC things. Well, but. and we'll have to we'll have to start giving those away during the Twitch stream of the podcast. Um, so if you're if you're listening to it at home on your wherever you get uh, your podcasts at. Um, we do stream this every, every two weeks when we record, we stream it on Twitch. It's, you know, it's not a necessarily a video podcast. We just kind of have a chat room and everybody's here talking and we pull from that chat room as we go. Um, but you know, uh, see questions and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, if you guys uh, are wanting to win stuff, hop into the chat room and hang out with us on uh, Twitch. Uh, when we're recording, we'll have some stuff to give away. Um, also I have started, and I don't know if you guys checked it out or not. I know Eric did. I don't know about Mm-mm. if you did it or not, Nathaniel. I didn't have a chance to yet. The anchor FM is kind of a new, um, well, I say new, it's been out for about a year, but it's kind of picking up speed. It's almost like a radio, um, station. Um, mm-hmm. I, I set up a channel there. Um, you upload uh, segments like five minute little segments of news bits or whatever you want to talk about in there. You know, you put music in to, to separate them. So I started doing that last Friday. Um, I had, uh, uh, uh my plan is, is I'm going to do three new stories, of, uh, for the week that we don't touch on, on the podcast. Um, I did talk about the GameStop thing because I just, I felt like I had to rant. That's where you're that if you if you like to hear me rant, that will be the place to get it at because I will I will rant for five minutes on there. Um, and that's <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. I ran it for five minutes, but I know you just um, put a timer on it and chop it just in the middle, no matter pretty, if you're still saying anything. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Just, if I go over, that's what I'm going to do. It's like I have audacity up recording and I'm watching my timer to see, you know, where I'm at while I'm talking. And it's like, OK, I'm coming up on five minutes. I'm going to have to stop because uh if i don't <laughs> i'm gonna have to chop it into two pieces but yeah it's really cool the only bad thing about it is it's only av- the audio is only available for 24 hours so if you don't catch it in the first 24 hours um what i've been trying to do is going back 
and re-uploading it so at least there's something there um the guys a couple of the guys in the uh on the site are going to do some things i know uh matt said he's going to want to do a segment uh jeremy's going to do like new releases and sale stuff and things like that so um but you know i've got uh, we've got some ideas there and it's it's a quick easy way to get little snippets of news and stuff like that my plan was to just do them on fridays um because of my work schedule but like this week i'm not working till thursday i'm just working thursday and that's it so i may do a little bit all through the week um so there's something there um just a snippet or two every day and then on friday do a big bunch of uh news and the other guys segments and stuff like that so but yeah it's um you know, you can um, subscribe to it. You can favor it, actually. And you can do little call-in things. You can hit a button and actually do a little recording so you can go, blah, 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 blah. You know, I really like this segment. Or what do you think of this? And you can actually get questions into us, and it'll play on there. So um, it's got a kind of a lot of cool ideas. Um, I'm actually keeping um, the snippets and putting them in a podcast format. I'm putting them all together. The thing is, Spinner, is for me to start another feed for a podcast is going to cost me more money. Um, yep. and, I, and I don't want to throw it on this feed um, because then it just kind of jumbles stuff up. We tried that once before with the retro podcast, and I think it kind of threw you know, regular listeners off that didn't want to listen to yeah. the retro and stuff like that. So um, my goal this week is to sit down and write out a patreon thing um and kind of i need to write it out i've got it in my head i need to write it out and see if it makes sense and and run it by you guys and see what you think and then we might put it up and that might be one of the stretch goals is if we get x amount a month we'll start a feed just for those so if you can't get them if you can't catch them on the anchor app they'll at least be there um feeds are getting expensive and they don't, they don't give you a whole lot of, you know, we only have about 10 episodes up at a time and we're just, we're at the bare minimum. I would like to have it where we have them all up, but 120 episodes deep, it's, that's a lot of bandwidth and a lot of, uh, a lot of space. I have a, I can tell you how much it is cause I have them all saved on my hard drive. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's, that's the plan with anchor is at least to get little snippets out there. Um, you can download them yourself from the anchor app and archive them so you can listen to them whenever you want, which is really cool. So, you know, if you, if you don't have time to listen to it that day, you can at least download it on your phone and then you can have it to listen later. But you know, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I like it. It's just a cool little thing. Cause I get to, I got all this cool music that I found when we were trying to make theme songs for the show. And I'm like, you guys like this one? <laughs> it's like, well, we like that one, but it's not really something for a show. Okay. And now I have them all and I can throw them on anchor to do my little in between things. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I can finally use this music that I've had forever. Uh, it's cool little retro sounding music. So, but yeah, be sure to check that. It's if you just search the gamers lounge on anchor, you'll be able to find it. We're not on under the actual feed. I can't figure out if, if the if you click on gaming there's only a small list of them i'm guessing it's that's only the popular ones i'm guessing you have to actually physically search other um search who you're looking for i don't know i haven't figured out how it, stuff like that works i keep emailing the anchor people and go well how does this work well how does that work and they keep emailing me back and they're just really nice people you know but it's like man they got to look at that email and goes golly what's this idiot asking now can he figure <laughs> yeah. it out on his own um but but yeah, so, but like I say, and I'll put it out on Twitter. So if you follow us on Twitter at GL underscore podcast, you know, you can, you can find out when those go live. Cause I will tweet them out. So people will know. Um, and then I'll retweet them on my account as well. So, but it's something different. It's something cool. It's another way to me. It's a, it's a gateway into this podcast. Um, uh, you know, yep. if people listen to that, then they want to hear more of, you know, a more of a gaming stuff like we do then that's where they want to check it out at is on this. So it's kind of a, it's a gateway drug. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> a gateway it's a gateway podcast, drug. Though. Sure. <laughs> it's a gateway podcast. And I'm in a car so much, I'm always looking for new ways to listen to things anyway. So I, I bumped into it the other day and I was like, well, this is pretty cool. I think we could do something like this. So um, I'm hoping to get more of the guys involved to do little, you know, with the, just being five minute segments the, at a time, I think it's a lot more accessible to some of the guys who want to do podcasty like stuff but don't have time to set and do a podcast so um 
hopefully we can snip a lot of stuff together and uh and and make it something really good that's the that's the plan anyway so we'll see yep all right well we're calling out a show sounds good we're done thank you thanks for joining us i appreciate it guys um very cool to see a lot of people out there a lot of a couple new people out there too which is always um always cool let me just save this real quick before shop nope show (laughs) because <laughs> you know i can type I, I don't know i can't say names i can't say names worth a crap tonight i don't know why but he can type well sorta <laughs> mash and mash. he's gonna try and say his own name and say gene yeah i'm gene meadows well it could be like my little my two-year-old niece she says she can't say ja so she says duh so i'm don <laughs> i'm don now <laughs> Yep, I'm done. So, all right, chat room, we are cutting off the uh, stream there. Thank you all very much for hanging out with us. We appreciate it, and we'll see you guys next time. See you guys next time.